I feel very strongly that there is not a uniform response. And I'm comfortable stating that not only because of people's experiences, the anecdotal reports, which as a scientist, I have to take very, very lightly or loosely, but sure. also the scientific evidence showing that you can alter, at least in animal studies, you can alter an animal's insulin response to a sweetener by altering its microbiome. And so it's, it is likely. So I do have some justification in saying it probably depends on the individual. Now, can you, you mentioned a couple interesting points. So the, the cephalic phase is this state or this idea that you can elicit insulin secretion in the absence of actually consuming something before it even ever hits your bloodstream. Um, the original research touched on this by looking at the degree to which the moment you're tasting it, which is what you'd alluded to. Right. But then you also touched on Indeed, this is supported by evidence. Even smelling certain foods will elicit this gastric and then in phase and insulin secretion. I've not seen the evidence on seeing food, but it's entirely possible. It makes sense to me. If smelling it, if tasting it, then why not seeing it? This other sense that is inextricably linked to, to the eating centers of our brain. It makes sense to me that it would also play into it. And I wouldn't be surprised at all that within seconds I could probably find multiple studies to support it. So all of that would fall under the umbrella of the cephalic phase. Now, I, I, I know this is gonna be a sensitive topic. My general takeaway is don't, some people respond poorly to sugar substitutes. Everyone I would say responds poorly to sugar. As much as I, I'm amused when people want to um, really start vilifying sweeteners. Um, and, and then I say, well, why aren't you vilifying sugar? Uh, you know, it's, you know, they'll say this study in, in rats gave aspartame, they caused cancer. Yeah. But if you gave them that much sugar, they would have not only had cancer, but also diabetes and kidney failure and blindness and everything else. So yeah. maybe in the grand scheme of things, it's not so bad, but we need to appreciate the limitations of those animal studies, of course, um, which, which are significant. My general takeaway is most of the sugar substitutes are going to be better than sugar itself. The At degree, least less bad. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And then and then when we start to map them all out or put them on a spectrum, it's enormously variable. Where on one hand, you have the sugar alcohols, which tend to have a pretty robust or at least uh, a significant increase in insulin. And not all of them, though. Erythritol appears to not, but then others like xylitol kind of does. Malitol, mannitol does have an insulin effect. Aspartame has little to no effect, although it might amplify an insulin effect if it's consumed with starches and sugars. So that's an important consideration. Some of these will have no insulin secretion on their own, but will amplify insulin secretion if it's being consumed at the same time the blood is getting loaded with actual glucose. And then on the other hand, we just published a paper and we're doing a human trial now on allulose, a rare sugar, so it doesn't quite fit into the sweetener categories, which in our evidence with the animals, we already published no insulin response whatsoever. And in the humans, the we've had about five humans come through. Early data also suggests no insulin response. Now, having said all of this, having said all of this, I do think a person should pay attention to how they behave after they've consumed this sugar substitute. That's probably a decent surrogate for whether you are experiencing a cephalic phase or any phase of insulin secretion, because if you consume this and then it triggers hunger that is causing this um, kind of starchy, sugary craving behavior, you probably did have an insulin bump, which is now affecting, uh, causing a hypoglycemic bump. And when the body gets hypoglycemic, it wants to correct that hypoglycemia and, and, and it will drive you to want to consume starches and sugars to try to correct what it perceives to be a little bit of a bump. So as unscientific of an answer as that is, if a person, it, if, if there's someone listening and they drink a Diet Coke and it absolutely just satisfies them and doesn't lead to any other eating or drinking behavior to try to fill that glucose gap, then I would say that's a person who's likely not experiencing a cephalic phase insulin secretion and can enjoy that as a, as a, a treat. However, if someone does this, so we, if you can see on your CGM or you notice that you start to crave stuff, then I would say that is something you need to start weaning yourself off of.